like I said, we're going to start with a with a fresh topic, which is statement of cash flows. Um, again, when you all have done PL and balance sheet in your uh, as a part of your BCom course or MCom course, you all have also come across cash flows. Now, other than PL and balance sheet, other than your notes to financial statements, other than your statement of changes in equity, other than these four items, there is a fifth item which is needed: is statement of cash flows. There's a standard dedicated on how you'll present it. <clears throat> it's IA seven. Um, now, anyone has any idea that why statement of cash flows are needed? I mean, we have a PL, we have a balance sheet. What additional is the statement of cash flows giving us? No, why value of cash at the end of the year. Okay, so Jayani says value of cash at the end of the year. So if you see your balance sheet, so correct. So the bank balance is yeah, cash. Of the cash. Okay. So coming to like just as of Jayani's problem, I mean Kiwari, she's saying because ca cash position you get, but oh, in, from the balance sheet also you get the cash position. Yeah. We so get to know about our investment activities and uh, on investment operation activities. What, what we uh, received and uh, yeah, yes, yes, we exactly yes. know how much we uh, got from each and every separate line of activity, correct? Correct, correct. See, if someone will tell me uh, we come to know the cash position, so that's not a valid answer, like Jayani said, because balance sheet may your end may build other cash position, so you don't need a cash flows for that, right? But like y'all said, we you know the segregation, like you know how much has come from investing activities, you know how much has come from operating activities. In segregation, name is the balance sheet. You just get the total position. So segregation ke liye, uh, cash flow is important. Okay. Now why segregation is so important? Now, for example, other 2013 ka balance sheet I analyze and 2014 ka if I analyze, okay. Um historical statements is for some company. And I can see it's 13 my 5 million cash position tha, and now it's come in 2014, it's become 8 million. So if I have to just comment on the cash part of it, I might go like and say that okay, from 2013 to 2014, um the cash has increased by 3 million, which is a significant jump. Um, you know, and I might go on uh, telling that the company is doing fairly good in terms of you know uh, its ability to generate cash, okay. But this is a wrong interpretation. This is a wrong interpretation. But ju just by comparing a 5 million and 8 million, I can't say that the company has a good cash generating capacity. Why? Any idea why I can't say this? Why I can't be sure of this? Why can't I be sure of this? This may not necessarily be like a, a revenue generated, but maybe it has caused due to some kind of one-off event. Yeah, it might not be easy if from 5 million to 8 million, if that 3 million ka increases by doing my core business, by making profit and this is my cash profit, then yes, of course, it's good. It's a healthy thing, okay? But anyway, yeah, like I'm saying, if a PP is sold for 7 million in the current year and out of this 8, only 1 million core trading are related and if I still go on and commenting, Saying that okay, the business has done really good, it makes no sense. How did, how did the business do good? If a machine sell of for seven million, machine sell on why is it bad? Because you do business with that. If you're selling it, it's not a good sign. It means you're facing cash problems. So that's why you started selling a property plan and equipment. The scope of business will become less. So we're able to do business. Less is not a good sign. My balance sheet is not telling me. So million, eight million, I don't get this idea. The voice break. Okay. So anyway, I hope everyone has understood the purpose of cash flows. Anyone didn't understand this part, tell me. Q cash flows banana the reason. A fifth additional 
स्टेटमेंट क्यों लग रहा है यू नो फॉर द शेयर होल्डर्स और फॉर द स्टेक होल्डर्स ओके सो एवरीवन इज क्लियर टू दिस पार्ट ओके um now there is a specific way we are going to present it like there is a specific way we present our pl and our balance sheet there is a specific way we present our cash flows also okay now cash flows as a standard itself is not very rules based it's not very prescriptive as in it doesn't dot to dot tell you that acha so and so event happened take it to this place so and so event happened take it to this this place it just gives you some generic rules okay it just gives you some generic rules using those principles Using those principles, you do the segregation. Segregation into what are the three major activities that you segregate cash flows into? Operating, operating investing, and financing. Operating, investing, and financing. Operating meaning your core trading business, right? Your core business, just the cash generator. Right? All those activities will go in operating. Investing as in purchase of land, property, machinery. This is investments. These are investments of the business. So, so sale of them, purchase of them, receiving dividend income. These are all clubbed as investing activities. Okay, then financing activities would be from where you raise funds to do business. From where you raise funds, are you using shareholders capital? As in, are you using funds from the shares, or are you taking money from the market in terms of loan? All that goes in financing activities. So these are the three major segregations. Now, like I told you, IS seven doesn't tell you rule based. Okay, you know, so and so activity has to go in operating. So and so has to go in financing. ऐसे कोई prescriptive prescriptive treatment नहीं है IS seven का. they just give you principles you know now as per as part of your fr financial reporting this exam you have to learn the, those rules okay so as per the exam those rules are very rigid you have to learn them however not from the standard point of view okay so let's come to that let's come to the format um anyone who has done cash flows earlier has an idea of what is the first line or first uh, line item that you start your cash flows with we're doing indirect method revenue revenue you uh, cash balance in the closing balance of uh, cash uh, cash in the balance sheet yeah year end balance um uh, looks like you all really have profit before tax yeah profit before tax you all have must have done an at least fa students ko yaad hona chahiye tha in direct method mein you have this line called profit before tax okay so first out so you all Are a very three major segregation. The usme se first which one we cater first section which we cater operating operating okay so you have section A or one second um all right cash flows try to pull statement cash flows from Operating activities. We are doing the performer. You will want you to give the heading performer. Okay. So like I told you, we are starting with operating, and I already mentioned that operating is what is operating. The core business is what is. Okay. Now in your P and L, in your profit and loss. Of course, you are talking about your core business. What are your core business? The revenue. That is what your Uh, earned money from your core business, the cost of sales, all the costs incurred in your core business. Okay, so like that, there are so many items which are directly related with the core business of yours, and after that you get your profit for the year. But then there were so many items in your PL, so many items in your PL which were not related with your core business also. They were probably part of your investing activities, or or they were something else. Um, sometimes they were not even cash related, right? They were just accrual figures. If you'll remember, the profit and losses made is made on accruals basis, not on cash basis. So there are so many times profits or expenses or losses which are non-cash items. I have booked a profit. I have booked a uh, suppose revenue figure. Revenue figure, which is that itself is not just cash revenue. That is also revenue booked on credit basis. My profit for the year that I get in my PL, the profit for the year. Is not cash profit. Is a accrual profit. I have to turn it into cash profit. I also have to turn it into hardcore business profit only, right? I have to turn it into hardcore business profit only. So I will start from profit before tax. I'll start from profit before tax, and I'll make changes to it so I can get so I can get uh, hardcore business profit and cash profit out of it. I'll remove everything 
that it is that is making it non cash and i'll remove everything that is making it non operating okay from my pvt from my profit before tax so jayani rightly said that it starts from profit before tax it starts from profit before tax you know think of some line items which i can directly adjust for which are there in the pl and they're making it a uh, non cash depreciation depreciation right so how did i get profit before tax definitely depreciation was deducted then i got profit before tax but do you all realize that depreciation is no cash outflow of money usme paisa the money doesn't go out right it's the asset ka life which you have allocated over the period right it's a non cash expense so i have to remove the impact of depreciation now what do i do should i add or should i less to remove the impact add add half correct i'll have to add it to remove the impact of depreciation it was deducted to get pbt so i'll have to add it back to remove the impact like depreciation there are certain other expense line which you probably want to remove either they're non cash or they're not related to your core business any other expense you can think of finance cost a finance cost you will remove you're already aware finance cost jo book hota hai pl mein is a accruals based figure coupon rate was actually the expense that is actually the interest element that you pay from your pocket and finance cost was what you book why because there are so many other elements like discount and premium and everything which you don't pay at the moment but you are accounting for it as an expense all that is included in finance cost right so one it is it, it could be a non cash element right because of that we are removing and second we don't want it right now it, uh, we first want uh, the trading profits exclusive of any interest element like if you try to recall your uh, pnl statement also you have uh, sometimes finance cost later you have a pbit profit before interest and tax then you have finance cost then you have pbt profit before tax then you have tax and then you have profit for the year so this is just a presentation thing you know um you could have directly all the expenses the tax part the finance cost everything you know above itself but that's not how you do it you present it in a different way because users probably need to profit excluding interest ka impact kitna hai right profit excluding tax ka impact kitna hai so that's why there is a presentation technique same when cash flows you do not want any finance cost impact right now later you probably will bring in picture okay but right now you don't want that impact so that's why you are adding it back okay you're adding it back to the pp profit before tax you all want you can make a annotation and write the reason over there it can be a accrual figure also and second you don't want the impact right now you would bring the interest element later in picture that's why two reasons okay two valid reasons depreciation if you all want to write the reasons you all can mark it and write it that it was a non cash expense you want to remove any non cash expense right so it was a non cash i can write here also the reason if you all want i'm writing at the side of the non cash second now any other items that you all can think of probably some um, income related items just kind of pack i would want to remove uh, ma'am profit uh, on sale of uh, any asset yeah profit on sale of any asset okay profit the profit on sale of any asset is not a part of operating activity for me it's not my core business right a non current asset or a machine if i sell so uska profit is also included in my pl but wo core business ka activity to nahi hai so if i want to remove them a profit ka impact agar nikalna hai to what do i do add or less 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 so profit from this total Of NCA. Same way, a loss on disposal of NCA. Us kabi impact we will have to remove. Loss is normally a non-cash expense, right? Loss is an expense or a um, hit to your PL that you're incurring, but you're not paying money for it at that moment, right? You're not paying any money for it. So because it's non-cash, you're removing it, or because you don't want you because it's not a part of your operating activity. So two reasons for loss: part not part of your operating activities, and second, it's not also not a It's a non-cash item. It's a non-cash expense item. So loss from disposal of NCA. So loss you will add. So that's why I'm writing less slash add. It's 
in that particular order. Okay, less for profit from disposal, add for loss from disposal. Up till this point, anyone has a problem? Let me know. Investing activity ka part hai. Ma'am, the finance course explanation you were giving it is it can be approvals. So we have to remove them. Can you just repeat that again? Finance cost, uh, if you remember when we were doing loan notes also, so there were two types of interest effective and coupon rate. Coupon rate was what actually you were paying, right? To keep that loan. Yes, um, you were paying that uh, interest that was your coupon rate, okay? I mean, you were paying it. You were paying from your pocket. But you realize that there is something called effective rate, which is different from coupon rate. Effective rate will either be same as coupon or more than coupon. Why it could be more than coupon? Because there are other elements like discount and premium, which also you bear, or there are issue cost, which also you bear as an expense for that loan, no, right? So that was included in the effective rate. So that's your finance cost, which you take to your PL, which is non-cash, which is non-cash, which is which includes other elements also, which you have incurred as an expense, but you're not paying at that moment. Okay. So these are all just um, remarks. These are not part of format, so you need to like put it that way that these are not part of your format. So your format is fully over here. Okay, so any doubts up to this point, let me know, else I'll keep proceeding. Okay, so we're done with this. Now, any other item of income that probably I want to remove the impact of? Decrease in receivables. Okay, so I'll come to that later, Rajat, that's correct, but I'll come to that later. So someone said investment income, that's correct. Investment income is also there in your profit and loss, right? But you don't want the impact of it in operating activities because investment income can be a section. It's not a core business category, right? It's not your core business. So that's why less investment income. Investment income can be dividend income, rental income, anything. But mom, investment income will go in investment section, right? Yeah, that's what. So why do we have to deduct it from it. this? Because it's there in my profit uh, before tax figure, right? The impact of that income is included, so I'm removing it. By deducting, I'm removing it. Later, I'll take it in my actually. I'll take it in my investing activity. Understood, how? Ma'am, how? So if we direct. If we directly take it to investment income, so it won't be okay. Of course, it won't be okay. I am not just see investment income is another portion that I will prepare, but profit before tax is the is the figure that I have to correct. How am I making operating activity? I'm not just putting things and you know making it. I'm correcting a figure. Profit before tax my investing activities is included. I have to remove them. Back. So then from direct method, uh, we have to do it differently, right? Like in direct method, we will put the investment in the investment. Uh, direct method, mein, yes, there is a different approach. But direct method is not tested for FR. It's not a part of the service. Oh, you have okay. to do it only in direct method. Okay. Yeah. Um, someone else also had it out. Somebody else was asking. Like, yeah, ma'am. Uh, how are we supposed to treat the interest on investment income? Interest on investment income. Um, in yeah. Interest is a type of investment income, right? It's not interest on investment income. Interest is a type of investment income, right? Okay. Interest income that you get if if you have given loan to someone and there is an interest income it's that you get. So that's a type of investment income. Yeah. Okay. Which you say it's 10. Yeah. So did you hear somebody say it's 10 o'clock? Yes. So yeah, any um, it's a type, so it's included in investment income, and you will remove it from your from your profit before tax. Okay. Anyone else? Any other doubt? Okay. Um, now there's one more uh, line item that you probably wouldn't think of as a government grant release. Okay. Now, because we have government, we have done government grants. We have a little idea. Um, government to help us to assist us, they they give us funds, right? And we can't just directly record them in our PL, right? We record them uh, over their depreciation rate. Over if it is for a non-current asset, 
we record it as per the depreciation rate of the asset. If there is it's a straight line method, then we take the life. If it's a WDV, then we take the depreciation rate. And accordingly, we'll keep realizing little by little the government grant in your PL as income. I hope everyone remembers this, the government grant treatment. Yes. It's recorded as income in PL, right? Um, that's also there in your peer, uh, that's also there as a part of your profit before tax. The place, the profit before tax again is not the right place for, for it, as in the operating activities is not the right place for it. This is one point. And second is also non cash income. If you'll realize what you take to the PL is what you deserve, it doesn't mean that that's what the cash you've got. For example, when I say this, what do I mean? Suppose in 2010, you got 20 million. Okay. For an asset, just the life is 10 years, but you got the entire cash in 2010 only, the year of purchase. 2011, mein kuch cash nahi 2012, mein also there's no cash coming in, right? There's no cash coming in in these years. Whatever cash had to come came in 2020. But what what are you recording in your PL as government grant income? GG, government grant income. Two million. In 2010, yes, 2 million. In 2011, 2 million. In 2012, 2 million. And you'll keep going on this way for the next 10 years, right? I mean, from 10 to another 10 years. So in my PL, I do have an income, but that doesn't mean I received any cash. So that's why I will have to remove the impact of any government grant income release in the PL. Okay, the right word is government grant income release in the PL. So less. government grant release in PL. Now they can use another word for it called amortization. Amortization of government grant. It means the same thing. Okay. Amortization of government grant is the same thing as government grant release in the PL. Now you need to be very clear with this word amortization in contact uh, in context of government grant. Why I say this is because depreciation ka treatment is adding to PBT. Okay, to remove the impact, you add to PBT. Depreciation is for tangible assets and amortization is for intangible assets. So amortization also you will add it. If there is intangible asset which is getting amortized, you will add it. But amortization of government grant ha has the exact opposite impact. It is less. Because the context changes, amortization for an intangible asset is a different concept and amortization of government grant is a different concept. It is release of grant in the PL. Okay, so both the terms are same, but they both have exact opposite treatments, right? So you need to understand that the meaning changes, Amorti amortization word come meaning changes when it is attached with government grant. So do not pass the same treatment if at all it comes in exam. Okay, so you can write away again, it's non-cash. Okay, it's non-cash and it's also part of investing. Okay, what actually income you get, that is the year in which you receive the 20 million government grant. It won't be recorded in your operating. It has to come in your investing. So it's non-cash also and it's non-operating also both. To this point regarding the grant, any doubts? Ask me. Yeah. yeah. In, uh, revenue grant, we do this thing and net off method where we re uh, remove the grant income from the la line item. So in that case, what would be the. Uh... Uh, in that case, also, you'll have to remove the impact of it because uh, you'll have to record for it only in the years that you have actually receive the cash so if there is anything else that has been recorded as revenue grant in the field you'll have to simply remove the impact but they won't um, ask you a revenue grant related question in your cash flows but even if it comes with the same treatment just remove the impact while letting it okay uh, so ma'am the first entry what we do is the deferred revenue one so that we have to reverse right um, no, we are not talking about reversing entries. We are not talking about making changes in PLM balance sheet. This is not what we are doing. We are not doing a change in journal entry. Anything to do with cash flow has got nothing to do with your journal entries or your books entry. This is another format altogether. You don't change that. You don't change your uh, journal entries. No, the amount I am talking. The amount, okay. So you are 
We're talking about that uh, deferred income that you keep reversing. Is the real yes? So that's the release in your PLA. You're correct. So that is yeah. You're right. You're right about that. Okay. Means you're not making change, but that deferred income that you kept re reversing every year is the figure that is the release to the PLA, which you'll keep accounting for in your cash flow. Okay. okay. Now. Um, Imagine if there is an increase in your uh, provision or accruals. Accruals, you all know, something that you have incurred as an expense, but you have not paid, right? Accruals is what a liability, something that you have incurred as an expense, but you have not paid. So that's an accruals figure in your balance sheet. It's a liability. There's also something called provisions. Provisions means in the future, you're going to incur it as a liability. So on future basis also, you record it, right? So provisions are that. Accruals and provisions are two types of liability only, basically. Now, imagine if there is a deduction in accruals or provisions, a deduction from 20, from 2010, a 5 million cup figure has become 4 million. So, if there is a reduction, how do you, how do you think you will treat it to your operating activity? Less. Less. Okay. Why do you say less? Because we have paid the cash, so cash will go out. Correct. So, because the logic here is you will less, okay, less decrease in provision or accruals. Why do we less a decrease in provision or accruals? You normally have a tendency to think of provision and accruals as a liability, and decrease in a liability is good. Right, so that's what you will think, and you will have a tendency to add it. This is what normally the common mistake is done for those who don't understand cash flows. Okay, but that's wrong. You are not looking at from uh, looking at items from the point of view of an asset or a liability or a profit or a loss. That's not how you are looking at. You you have a point of view. Your you have your point of view is cash. You're checking the cash. So if the liability is decreasing, it's bad from your cash point of view. Okay. If your liability is decreasing, it's bad from your cash point of view. Why do I say it's bad from your cash point of view? Because what is cash it is flowing out? Yeah, it means you're paying cash, right? That's why your liability is decreasing. So less decrease in general accruals because your cash is going up. So that's why less. Okay. Now this is one story. Why I uh, deduct the decrease in provisions or accruals from my operating activities is because th there's a decrease in cash. This is one story. Now there could also be an increase in the accruals or provisions. Okay. So for example, seven million say ten million. Okay. Now increase in provision or accruals. How do I deal with them? Any idea? Add it. Okay. What the reason could be? Why would I add it? Yeah, because we haven't paid anything. So the cash is still with us. Okay, so Kanchan is saying because we're holding cash, right? 7 million to 10 million means what we're holding cash. So it's good from cash point of view. So that's why I add. This is one way to remember it. Okay, this is one way to remember it. Second, there's another deeper meaning to it. When 7 million to 10 million job increase, hota hai, so you know if there is any increase in the liabilities, you record it as an expense in PL. So of course, to achieve my profit before tax figure, there is an expense. Expense line, right? There is an expense line of three million. That's how I got my PPT. But that expense line is non-cash. A increase in provision of accruals means what? It, it's an expense, but it's a non-cash expense. You're not paying it. That's why it's a liability, right? So because it's a non-cash, I'm removing the impact of it, right? So there are two ways you can look at it. One is the liability is increasing, which means you're reserving cash, you're not making payments. So that's good from cash point of view. That's why you're adding. Second, you can see that these are uh, non-cash expenses and you want to remove the impact of non-cash expenses. That's why you are adding. Uh, okay. Increase in provision or approval. We can move to Leo.
Ma'am, can you please repeat decrease in provision or approval? Yeah, one second. I will do that. Holding cash or the other reason can be non cash expense. Okay, so someone wanted decrease in provision of rules. The reason decrease in provision of rules means you're making payments, you're making cash payments. That's why. So that's bad from your cash point of view. If, why would your liability decrease? Because you're making a payment. So cash point of view is bad. That's why it's. If you want to get this also, you can make a note of making payments. Bad from cash point of view Okay, anyone any doubts up to this point? All right, so I'll proceed then. Um, now I want you to imagine an increase in receivables. Will an increase in receivables, what will you do with it? Will you add or less increase in receivables? Add. And why do you say, okay, so I won't say it's correct or wrong, but why do you say add? Because receivables are more enough. cash is coming in. So it is increase in receivable means more cash is coming in, guys. No, ma'am. We you should will adopt. Yeah. It doesn't mean it. it is precisely the opposite because it means the debtors are holding cash. They are not making payments. They are reserving cash for them. So it's bad from the cash point of view. So less increase in receivables. Same way, increase in inventory. Uh, again, do you think it's good or bad? Increase in inventory. Bad. Bad. Why do you say bad? No, because we are buying inventory. inventory and cash so, blocks there until yeah. you sell it. So. Yes. Uh, increase in inventory means you're buying inventory and your money is stuck in there. So that's again bad for the cash flow. So less increase in receivables or inventory. Okay. What about a reduction in receivables? What do you do with that? Add. Add. Because what does it mean? You are receiving cash. Yes. A reduction in receivable means you receive in cash. Okay. So decrease in receivables or inventory. Inventory also decreasing means your money is getting released by the sale of inventory. Your money is not stuck in. So same reason. Add decrease in receivables and inventory. The exact opposite will happen with the payables. If the payables are increasing, or say, say for example, payables are decreasing, good or bad? Good. Payables are decreasing, good or bad? Why? What does it mean? What does it mean? Bad, bad. That's correct. You pay because we are paying back, so cash yes. is going out. Yes, it's bad because payables are decreased means you're making payment, which means cash is going out, right? So that's a bad thing. So that's why less. Increase in payables would be good because it means that you're reserving cash with you. You're not making payments. You're reserving cash. Okay. So um, less add 
less would be decrease in tables. Add would be increase in tables. Now after this, you will get your profit from operations. Uh -huh. yeah. Now I'm, I'm getting yes, I'm confused with that. Uh, like, how is like an increase in reviewables affecting the PNL? I'll just come to one second. I'll just come to profit or just wait. Yeah. Then what was your question? Like I'm, I do not get exactly like uh, why is like increase in receivables or inventory coming in this thing. Um, how is increase in receivables and inventory not coming in PLR? Is uh, increase in receivables um not associated with PL? You're just thinking okay, receivables term to balance sheet may be that, but increase in receivables means what? You have made higher revenue. You've made sales, that's why it is there, right? That's why there's an increase in receivables, right? Okay, okay. So likewise, inventory is also part of cost of sales. It's included in your cost. So that's why they all yeah. are connected with PL. So yeah, cost of sales ka impact is never. Yeah, they all included, no? They are all um, having impact in PL. Okay, okay. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, welcome. Okay, so I got my cash flow from operations. I hope no one has doubt over here. So this is one place where we uh, stopped and we made a subheading or we, we got one, one type of figure that is cash flow from operations. After this also, we'll continue operating activities. Okay, we will now do less interest paid. Less interest paid. If you remember, I had added finance costs. I wanted to remove them back here. Okay, because I told you I don't want the impact of finance costs at this moment. Up till cash flow from operations, I didn't want any impact of interest element. Just like I told you in PNR, also you present sometimes PBID profit before interest and tax. So, same way, I don't want any impact of interest up to this point. After that, I will do a less interest paid. Okay, after that, I'll do a less interest paid. I will also do a la less tax paid. Okay, less tax paid. Now I'll get my net cash flow from operations. Net cash flow from operations. So this is a presentation technique. Up till this point, I want my uh, cash profit figure exclusive of any interest and tax on that. After that, I want my cash profit figure. Uh, that is, I want to see interest or tax taken. Ke ke Kitna remain. Presentation, purely presentation. Okay, so you've come to an end to cash flow from operating activities. Make a note of this. Any annotations that you want to do more from your side, mark it so that you can remember and retain it. We move to the next section in a minute. Anyone has any doubts regarding reasons for any particular line items? The less interest rate is the coupon rate that is paid for the year. Uh, sorry, finance cost is effective rate and interest rate is the open rate. Yeah. Anyone still copying all this? Okay, so let's wants to understand receivable and tables, why they are added. Okay. Um, Okay, so Blit, if you have 2015 and 2016 ka balance sheet and if your receivables from 10 million has decreased and become 6 million, okay? What does this actually mean, Blit? If receivables 10 million to 6 million, ho gaya, what does it mean? It means that your debtors who were supposed to pay you money 10 million have already paid you 4 million. That's why today they are at 6 million, right? This means debtors who are supposed to pay you 10 million have already paid you 4 million. That's why they are at 6 million right now. So there's an inflow. That's why decrease in receivables, you will add. Okay. Likewise, inventory also. If your inventory was supposed to 10 million and right now it's 6 million. So inventory means what? Your money is there in that stock, right? Your money is stuck in it. Uska decrease hona, that money has, uh, you've uh, 
probably it's been sold and you've earned that money, right? You have sold it and you've earned that money. So that's why a decrease in inventory you will add. Okay, decrease in inventory you will add. All right. So it looks like everyone is okay. So I think everyone has written up rating. Now let's move to investing activities. I kind of already discussed before starting with cash flows, what investing activities are made up of. So what are the kind of line items I will record here? Any idea? What are the kind of line items that I'm recording? Purchase over here? of non purchase of property plan or investing in the Okay, so purchase of property plan and equipment because that's expansion, that's an investing activity. Okay, then. When you say purchase, also. It's good then. Yes, when you say purchase, the sale also comes here. So purchase of an NCA, sale of an NCA. Now think and tell me purchase of an NCA from my cash point of view. Is it good or bad? Bad. 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 Because your cash is going. That's why it's bad, right? So purchase will be less. And what about sale of NCA? Good means bad. Good. Yeah. Add. Cash point of view, add. so add, right? So you will realize so many things are just exactly opposite, opposite from a business point of view. From business point of view, Selling a non-current asset is not a good sign. Okay, I mean, it's, it's it's not considered good. But from cash point of view, for cash flows, it's good. That's why you add it. So you need to understand that you have to change your perspective when you're doing the cash flows. You can't look at it from the business point of view anymore. All the pluses and minus that you do, you're checking from cash point of view. Okay, so add sale of NCA. Less purchase of NCA. What about investment income that you're receiving, right? The coupon rates that you're receiving for loan notes that you've given or anything. The rental Add. income that you're receiving. What do you do with that? Add. 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 Investment income. Okay, we have too much Anyway. <clears throat> investment income received. Uh, This could be interest, this could be rent, etc. Okay. So sale of NCA, purchase of NCA, um, catered investment income, catered. Anything else that you all can remember at the top of your head, Janessi Niagara? I'm government grant. Received. Yeah, government grant received, right. So if you remember, I created an example and I told you that 2010 mein 20 million government grant mila. 2011 to kuch nahi mila. record kare ke achha. You know what? Now we rightly deserve. So PL mein the income record kare the 2 million, 2 million. Okay. But cash jo inflow tha wo actually 2010 mein tha. So agar ye 20, sorry, agar ye 2010 ka cash flow ban ra, if I'm making a cash flow for 2010, so I will write a government grant received. However, if 2010 can I suppose this is for 2011, 2012, 2013, I wouldn't have this line. I wouldn't have. Yeah, I wouldn't have this line government grant received. Um, I think I should increase this it's much better. So anyway, um, do you all understand Julia? Okay, so then after this point, you get your net cash flow from investing activities. Okay, 
so section b is over section b is short and it is it's on the easier side also okay now coming to section c what section remains now finance what kind of activities i'm going to note here now paying interest or what are the line items interest shares okay what about shares dividends what dividends so dividend paying dividend payments you're saying okay that's it just and dividend payments interest. regarding and issue of shares redemption of the long term loans yes, yes. the main items i mean what you all were saying is also right but the main items are issue of shares repayment of loan notes all these are more i mean these these are the core items which make financing activities issue of shares i told you right financing activities matlab kahan se money is coming to the business ek to issue of shares hota hai aur ek hota hai loan market se loan lekar so issue of shares and issue of loan both both will fall to a issue of shares um uh, is it good or bad from cash flow point of view लोन नो both are good okay now somebody said repayment of loan okay or repayment of loan notes or repayment of lease right lease lease uh, when you take a item on rent so you're making lease payments so repayment of lease all this from cash point of view is this is it good or bad 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 yes. cash going on so repayment of loan notes slash redemption repayment of loan slash The other term they can use is redemption of loan notes. Someone said dividend payment. That's right. Dividend paid. Dividend paid. Somebody said interest paid also. But if you realize, I've already catered interest paid. I've already catered interest payment in. operating activities but you all are right it is it can also be part of financing so both are valid treatments but of course you can't take it both places koi ek jagah hi loge aap now for evenness for uh, so that everyone is on same page always have a habit of taking interest paid in operating okay just in case examine you have taken there also you won't be marked wrong but if you refer your fr sums which are done um in your um, uh, kit also and in your books also interest paid has always been taken here okay but that doesn't mean you all don't remember ke financing mein nahi aata it does come in financing suppose it's coming this question is coming in the mcq form and certain items are given to you interest paid is there issue of loan notes is there depreciation is there and then they'll ask you just related with financing activities what are the cash flows from financing activities then you might as well put the interest payment over there okay so you need to remember okay interest paid can come here because it's there for the servicing of loan right so it is allowed to put here okay but for if i mean for just so that we all as a class are on same page so putting it away here. so normally in the normal world okay in the normal world interest paid um is taking is taken in operating activities only for those businesses the logic it's only for those businesses jiska uh, core business jiska core business is lending money okay so if it's a financial institution or a bank then it will be part of your operating activities interest paid but for any other type of uh, industry manufacturing industry or any other industry interest paid will come as a part of section c okay this is in your normal world So make a note of all these three sections. Hmm. Put an end to this section. Net cash flow from financing activities.
can i proceed or anyone still popping all right now um popping okay <clears throat> Ma'am, in in yeah. what activity you will deduct all the amount from profit before tax? No, 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 I didn't understand. In investing activities, what? We will deduct all of these amounts from profit before tax, right? When in not in investing activities, in operating activities, you have a profit before tax, sir, to which you okay, have so items, ha? Huh? So, um, um. Uh, Investing activities में जैसे you have written add sales तो हम कौन सा amount add करेंगे? तो ये जो figure है ना ये वाला figure profit amount हो रहा है जितने adjustments हो रहे हैं सारे उसी को हो रहे हैं okay तो ये पीजी की figure yeah okay yeah thank you All right. So uh, coming to this, uh, after section C, you have a net increase or decrease in cash, which means um, total of net cash flow from operations, from investing, and from financing. If whatever is the total, you will club it together, and this is your net increase or decrease in cash in the year. What was that? Whether there was an increase or a decrease. When you club this, you will get that. Okay. Now what you can do is to this, you can add your opening cash balance. Opening cash and cash equivalent. Okay, to this you can add your opening cash and cash equivalent, which means um, if you see last year's balance sheet, you will see a bank ka figure, bank and cash position ka figure. You will add it. You will add it to the net increase or decrease. Okay. Do you have any idea what you will achieve by this by adding the opening cash balance to the net increase? Closing cash balance. Closing cash. Yes. You will get your closing cash and cash equivalent for that. So this is a good way to tally if or to cross check if you've gone right in your cash flows. When you add your opening cash and cash equivalent, you will see whether it tallies with your closing cash and cash equivalent or not. So this is a, this is your format of cash flows. Based on this, we will be doing numerical today. I mean, we'll do entire twenty marks, huh? Two twenty marks, some that we will try to take up. 